In Attack on Titan, the equipment bots used to fight back against the Titans were the omnidirectional mobility gear. Design and implementation of the gear was something that helped regular people of parody stand a chance against the unrelenting and uncanny brutality of the Titans. But the speculative scenario is this. Could omnidirectional mobility gear work in real life situations? The original manga was first published in 2009, and later, the original Japanimation adaptation was first broadcasted in 2013. In those particular years, the depiction on practicality of the gear were basic. However, the anime reimagined the entire concept of the omnidirectional mobility gear. From information now known, the production studios thought true and conceived of the anime actually improvised on conceived of new ways to depict the gear in animated form. As a result, due to the extraordinary quality of the animation, viewers could plainly see in great detail the actual dynamics of the mobility gear. The depictions were easy to believe. A good amount of these details were later implemented into the manga because the mobility gear in action were too good not to use. In the early episodes of the original adaptation, it was mentioned that the gear itself emerged through trial and error scenarios, situations against the Titans due to conventional warfare against them being futile. Combat against the Titans proved a few facts, that basic Titans were slow until aggravated when they would move quickly. Originally, they were unable to climb, only walk, perhaps even lunge at their targets. They were susceptible to being stabbed or cut, as this later developed into the strategy of targeting legs or arms to stop their movement and ultimately the slice at the base of the neck for an automatic kill. Eventually, the mobility aspect of the gear hotted that the grappling hooks were added to give those who fought against the titans air-based mobility to quickly escape from going to the titans or even strategic locations when attacking or defending against them. The blades needed to cut through the thick skin of the titans through necessities had the attachable or detachable blades. They were serrated or had multiple layers to take into consideration that the titans had varying levels of thickness with their skin. On for prolonged use of the blades, they would become dull and often needed to be removed on exchanged during battle. Due to the entire makeup of the gear in battle, standard sword grips couldn't be used. Hence, the handle grips depicted in the series had to be modified and were eventually conceived of to take into consideration the fluidity of movement that those wearing the gear would have to more than likely endure. Also, the fact that to be literally flung, tossed on thrown through the air meant that the sword strikes would also have to take into consideration the gun-like grip-based handle for the swords. The cables needed to fire the grappling hooks to surfaces would also have to be able to detach or be reused depending on the situation that the wearer might be in. The machinery of the gear had it to be gas-powered, so each user had a specific amount of canisters as a part of their gear. Once the gas canisters were depleted or were punctured. They were rendered useless and the user couldn't grapple onto surfaces as needed or desired. All of these explanations on theories were under two pivotal factors that the individual wearing the gear. It was depicted in the manga on mentioned throughout the original adaptation that the skill of the individual user of the ODM gear would be if they survived a titan encounter or be killed in battle. The displays of the scout regiment, the military police, or even the various garrisons all depended on the talent of those wearing the gear. The displays of Mikasa or Levi, often considered to be the best users of the gear, were the exception. They hold extraordinary talent when in comparison to most gear users. Actually had a roughly 50% chance at fighting on surviving basic battles against the titans. It was also mentioned that the more a person used the gear, the better they became, and this increased their chances of survival. As Levi once mentioned that eventually, even the most experienced users can and would die. 
it was just a matter of probability for the specific counter against the titans in which they would die. Armin mentioned that it also had to do with the amount of titans that the user would be against. Our speculations by Eren once had it that the average soldier who wore the gear would be able to handle at most a few titans single-handedly. Other estimates ranged anywhere from three to five small titans, or one to three for standard-sized titans for a single person of average skill. There was a reason why the ODM gear was specifically created with grappling hooks on being gas powered. Due to these literal fan turbines, soldiers would be propelled through the air by gas powered momentum. As a result, the user would need to have a good idea of the environment around them to accurately move through it at a moment's notice if needed. The gear was specifically designed to combat titans within the Wall of Parody. As mentioned by Mikasa, Armin, Levi, and Erwin thought to use the gear in a wide open area without any tall buildings or even trees of appropriate height or thickness to use as anchor points for the grappling hooks made them all but useless. Due to the weight of the gear, walking around in them for extended periods of time caused the wearer to become tired and fatigued. This was why some soldiers didn't put on their gear until right when a titan or titans were spotted and a warning sign was sent out to all within the vicinity of the said sightings. On then, only then, for some, the equipment was put on. This was sometimes considered to be a bar tactical maneuver because it often took time to put on or to adjust the gear so it would function properly for the user when in combat. The gear were often given to soldiers at defaulted calibrations, as it was often up to the specific user to customize various aspects of it to their own personal preferences. There was no soldier that could just put on a set of ODM gear and immediately use it. Everyone had to customize or change some of the defaulted settings to what would benefit them to survive encounters against titans. To wear and even use defaulted gear was considered suicide, and absolutely everyone always modified it before any action was taken. Clearly not everyone could use such equipment. Even if there were men or women skilled enough to accurately wear and use the gear, similarly to the manga and anime, there is an undeniable risk in using the gear because early in the series there were claims that accidental deaths were common to people misjudging their ability to use the gear, the environmental situations that they were in, as well as the titans being smarter than expected or even unknown malfunctions when using the gear. Something of the sort does seem possible in a real life situation, but technology would be done through multiple stages of development, and at first nothing of the sort would exist, but eventually there might be something similar to what was depicted in Attack on Titan with the omnidirectional gear-based equipment. Mm -hmm.